Third night in a row of attacks on the Al-Aqsa Mosque. It's every year. It's every damn Ramadan. Israeli forces go in, brutalize overnight worshippers in the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Then there are some attempts sometimes at rocket attacks on Israel from the Palestinians who do not have sophisticated weaponry. The Iron Dome is very good at intercepting these. And it's a response to the brutalization. But th that's this. The brutalization at Al-Aqsa is 1A. Then then the re retaliation inevitably happens because Palestinians go, we don't want to take this lying down. And then Israel goes, boom, now strikes on Lebanon, strikes on Gaza, because we have the weapons and you don't. And then it's framed in the media as a conflict when it's entirely asymmetrical in the function of an apartheid state. And this just tweet by this writer, Emily Schrader, really got my blood boiling. She's a, she's a Zionist, and she, she put this out there of this video of kids, young people, playing footy, kicking around a soccer ball outside of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And she tweeted, they care about Al-Aqsa so much that this is what they are doing there tonight, playing football. Unbelievable. Because when worshippers are beaten systemically by Israeli protesters, everyone else is supposed to just stop and mourn. It's systemic, but everyone's supposed to stop and mourn every time that it happens. It's the third night in a row that this has happened. And how do we know that these kids who are playing soccer or young people outside have any idea what's happening on the inside? The violence, again, it actually proves that you're wrong in this instance, morally. Because this shows that the violence is so quotidian and the oppression is so every day that people are still going to play soccer and like here, go back to the quote tweet what from muhammad uh, Sh uh shihada responded to it because this is exactly the right response here dear emily muhammad says playing football at a mosque isn't forbidden or offensive as long as kids respect pa prayer times this is in turkey heavily armed occupying forces raiding Palestine, palestine's holiest mosque regularly violently emptying it and dictating who goes in uh and uh when is pure desecration and that's that's of course the reality of this and you're also you're so right in the sense of like what's the alternative like also like as if as if she might know more than them that they are like they are like um showing some sort of indignity towards a holy space right and then also that's part e of it too e they're saying this is this is our oh, land this and is you're wrong you don't deserve this because you're playing a game as right. if at, you're trivializing it but how as if, as trivial the, have there been games played at synagogues ever has there ever been a game played at a synagogue within or jerusalem celebrations you better and, shut that synagogue down then you better do that by your standard and and with that being said too it's also like the question becomes too what would you rather them do cower be be scared like hide like would that be more like suitable or appropriate yeah. they because they because they are the ones being oppressed they therefore can't have can't have the like even like even have a remote sense of yeah. whimsy or spontaneity as children they need to be in mourning constantly because that would move the needle that would stop the apartheid right except for the fact that palestinians have tried every single avenue to getting the israeli government to take their humanity seriously and nothing has worked the united states continues to fund israel without uh, uh without any kind of caveats essentially despite how far right the government has gone by western political standards um the settlements continue on a daily basis the brutalization continues on a daily basis nearly 100 palestinians killed uh by israeli forces in this calendar year thus far it they have tried everything the only thing that people like emily want is for palestinians to shut the fuck up and submit that's what they want i don't want and and submit to our rule be second class citizens for the rest of your life and uh too bad because that's not in human nature and the fight is going to continue but the but but the problem is just that like there needs to be some financial ramifications for this apartheid state. It cannot go on. And as you said, like, as you said also, as you alluded to, if anything, like, there is such, to me, there is such power and such importance to being able to even find a shred of joy 
yeah. for these kids while while in their own perspectives especially as a, as a child when your entire world can be relegated to the the space around you and that, and that it can't and that sometimes it's not able to be opened up especially when you're under when you're in war essentially when you're right. being subject to violence and your p- families are being subject to violence to find a way to ha- be able to have fun and have joy in your life that that is not essentially already been ripped from you or taken from you I think there's real, real power and real strength in being able to find that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and like, what is Emily Schrader saying there, right? They're not being good enough Muslims. You're the, you're the, yeah. you're the police of, of who's, a, who's a good Muslim and who isn't at this point. They must not mind that it's uh, being raided because they, they enjoy their communal space. It, their communal space is not sacred to them because they have enjoyment in it, which is why we should read it and take it as our own. Yeah, right. Like, what's the alt? What's well, yeah? What's the other end of it? <laughs> like, it's it, just a pretext for dehumanization. Yeah, that yeah. these ma- these Palestinians they are they they believe in nothing. They don't even believe in Al Aqsa and the sacred mosque that they say that they care about, right? World's second best case study says, God forbid Palestinian kids try to have a child childhood. 